Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Oshale here. Don't mind if you hear noises, Teddy is playing on the floor. But in today's video, I want to share with you all my Blackathon TBR and also to help you choose yours. For those of you who are still strangely unaware of what Blackathon is, <laughs> Blackathon is, it's a readathon that is going on in February and it's being hosted by Jesse over at Bowties and Books, Francina Simone over at Francina Simone, as well as Lauren over at the Novel Lush. And basically there's some great prompts and it's going on, I believe, the entire month of February. I'm sorry if that's wrong. I will link more information in the description box as well as Jesse's video where they talk about basically the entire readathon and all that it entails as well as all the prompts. So without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce you to the books that I have chosen for the readathon for myself as well as some helpful and wonderful suggestions for you all if you are still looking for a little bit of help. Prompt number one is Feel the love. Read a book, any genre, featuring romance between two black people or one black person and a person of color. So for this, I have chosen Thief by B. Love. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, then you already know that B. Love is one of my absolute favorite African-American fiction writers. She writes mostly, I want to say it's new adult. It's, you know, the characters are fairly young. She also writes a lot of urban uh, romance and urban fiction as well. So her book Thief, I'm just going to give you a short synopsis. The cover is gorgeous. Oh, I'm obsessed with the cover. Luca Kareem and Rihanna Santee made an exchange a little over eight years ago. A heart for a heart. Rihanna had no problem relinquishing her heart to Luca, but Luca preferred spreading his love and his body thinly to almost every attractive woman he came in contact with. After a year of warring for a place in his heart, Rihanna finally gives up. But when Luca leaves her, he takes her heart with him. Rihanna Santee and Herbert Jacks made an exchange a little under seven years ago. A life for a life. Herbert had no problem saving Rihanna's life, knowing that one day she'd be able to return the favor in the most lethal way. She'd become a heartless, emotionally detached hit woman, stealing the hearts of men on her path just for fun. It's when Rihanna chooses to leave her life of crime that Herbert decides to cash in on that last lethal favor. When Luca and Rihanna's paths cross again, Rihanna has the opportunity to not only reclaim her heart, but stop Luca's as well. There is just one problem. The Luca of now is not the Luca from back then. This Luca has the ability to not only return Rihanna's heart, but make her love him twice as deeply with it as well. Will Rihanna finally receive her revenge, or will she end up losing more than she ever thought was possible because of her love for Luca Kareem? So it looks like the author categorizes this book as an urban romance. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to this read. Another amazing option is Wonder by Christina C. Jones, another one of my absolutely favorite absolutely favorite, absolute favorite African-American fiction writers. Her books are absolutely, I have no words. I adore her. And so Wonder, I will just read you the, phenops, the phenop, synopsis really fast. It all came down to me. The one who followed the rules never went looking for trouble. I kept to myself. I just wanted to take care of my family, to not constantly look over my shoulder, worried about the things that went bump in the night. I just wanted to survive. But that wasn't meant to be. As luck or fate or something would have it, the trouble found me. I followed a rabbit through the wreckage of a half-ruined world to get back what was mine and wound up at the end of it, in Wonderland. But there's nothing magical about it. While Wonder does feature a central love story, it is not a contemporary romance. And so this looks like it is a dystopian, it sounds like a dystopian or a post-apocalyptic story. So. <sighs> I honestly, I don't know which one to choose. I'm torn between Thief and Wonder. I might just read both. But whichever one you guys choose to go with, you can't go wrong. Prompt number two, Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. <laughs> read a graphic novel or a comic series with a black or African main character. Now for this, once again, I have some options for you guys. And once again, I'm torn and don't know which one I'm going to choose. Option number one is Black by Kwanzaa Osajeyefo. 
I hope I'm saying that correctly. This premise sounds so fascinating, you guys, so I'm just gonna read it to you really quick. In a world that already hates and fears them, what if only black people had superpowers? After miraculously surviving being gunned down by police, a young man learns that he is part of the biggest lie in history. Now he must decide whether it's safer to keep it a secret or if the truth will set him free. And it's issues one through six so far, and yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm so excited. This sounds amazing. Option number two is Naomi by Brian Bendis, and here's a synopsis for that one. When a fight between Superman and Mongol crashes into a small northwestern town, Naomi, last name question mark, begins a quest to uncover the last time a superpowered person visited her home, and how that might tie into her own origins and adoption. Follow Naomi's journey on a quest that will take her into the heart of the DC universe and unfold a universe of ideas and stories that have never been seen before. Join writers Brian Michael Bendis, David Walker, and breakout artist Jamal Campbell in Wonders Comics' massively ambitious new series and star, Naomi. Let's talk about representation, my girl Naomi, her hair, I'm living, I cannot wait. And now, I just, I don't know, I might also read both of these. This TBR is getting out of control. I hope it's somehow helping y'all, hopefully, and not just overwhelming myself. Prompt number three, hear us. Any work by a black slash African author, oh, read any work by a black slash African author. For this, I have so many different options. Now, my book club, a seat, sorry if the camera shakes, Teddy is just ruining lives as always. But my book club, A Seat at the Table Book Club, is reading My Sister the Serial Killer by, what is the author's name? Oh my gosh, of course I forget her name. I will annotate it here. Oyankan Braithwaite? Whatever, I will have it annotated here. But we are reading that for our January book of the month. So that will be going on for a little bit of February until our live show, which is going on on Sunday. February 10th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mark your calendars. We're going to be talking about it. But yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, what else? My other options for y'all. Let's see. Ooh, this is a good one. I almost forgot about this. That's, good. That's why I got my notes, y'all. That's why I got my notes. Okay, what it means when a man falls from the sky. Stories by Leslie Nieka Arima. Oh, let me read you guys this synopsis because when I read this, I... You know that one-click option on Amazon is lethal for people like us. And I just one-clicked it, so it should be coming soon. When a man falls. Yes, honey. So this book is highly decorated. It is a National Book Foundation 5 Under 35 honoree. It's winner of the 2017 Kirkus Prize. It's winner of the NYPL's Young Lions Fiction Award. It's a finalist for the National Book Critics Circle Leonard Prize. It's shortlisted for the Aspen Words Literary Prize. <laughs> like, this is a dazzling, accomplished debut collection that explores the ties that bind parents and children, husbands and wives, lovers and friends to one another and to the places they call home. So this is a short story fiction collection. In Who Will Greet You at Home, a National Magazine Award finalist for The New Yorker, a woman desperate for a child weaves one out of her hair with unsettling results. In Wild, a disastrous night out shifts a teenager and her Nigerian cousin onto uneasy common ground. In Future Looks Good, three generations of women are haunted by the ghosts of war, while in light, a father struggles to protect and empower the daughter he loves. And in the title story, in a world ravaged by floods and riven by class, experts have discovered how to fix the equation of a person with rippling, unforeseen repercussions. Evocative, playful, subversive, and incredibly human, what it means when a man falls from the sky heralds the arrival of a prodigious, prodigious talent with a remarkable remarkable career ahead of her. Ah, if you can't tell, I am so excited. Just reading that synopsis has me so hyped. Oh, I have to take a deep breath, calm down, because that's how excited I am for this read. It sounds amazing. Wig snatched. Prompt number four. Four, right? One, two, three. Yes. Feel the beat. 
Spoken word. Listen to these four poems and share your favorite on social media or with a friend. Discuss what this poem means to you and why it matters. So pause on this one. I will be um, looking at the four different poems. They are all listed in the description box of Jesse's original Blackathon announcement video. I believe all the spoken word poems are here on YouTube, so I will list them as well down in my description box so y'all can check them out if you just want to check them out there or you can go to Jesse's and check them out on their channel as well. But yes, I'm so excited. I love spoken word. I do not have enough opportunity to like indulge in it and I plan on doing a video response with a really good friend of mine discussing which one means the most to me and if I can talk her into listening to one of them them, then which one means the most to her and we can have a great dialogue and discourse and just uh, I cannot wait I cannot wait to share with you all prompt number five more than a color we house complexity within us read a book starring an intersectional intersectional black character black and LGBTQ plus black and neurodivergent black and disabled etc so I have several options for this one I have already read and it was excellent. I read it back in 2016 and it really stayed with me and it was just, it was a wonderful read and I highly recommend it. And that is not otherwise specified by Hannah Moskowitz. And I, I either read it back in 2016 or 15, I cannot quite remember, but you know I'm about to read the synopsis for y'all, so. But yes, I really love it. I loved the cover. The cover is what really drew me to the book. And I just had never really seen a cover like that. And, and you know, now, of course, we have way more options, which I'm so thankful for because representation is so important. But I really liked this book. And here is the description. From the award-winning author of Break and Teeth comes a raw and honest exploration of complicated identities and a novel about a girl living on the fringe of every fringe group in her small town. Etta is tired of dealing with all of the labels and categories that seem so important to everyone else in her small Nebraska hometown. Everywhere she turns, someone feels she's too fringe for the fringe, not a gay enough for the dykes. Her ex click oh, <laughs> I'm so excited I can barely read. Her ex click thanks to a recent relationship with a boy, not tiny and white enough for ballet, her first passion, not sick enough to look anorexic, partially thanks to recovery. Etta doesn't fit anywhere until she meets Bianca, the straight, white, Christian, and seriously sick girl in Etta's therapy group. Both girls are auditioning for the Brentwood, a prestigious New York theater academy that is so not Nebraska. Bianca might be Etta's salvation, but can Etta be saved by a girl who needs saving herself? It was so good. I highly recommend this read to everybody. Please go pick it up if you are still looking for an option for this prompt or just for the heck of it, because it's good. Another amazing option is Under the Udala Trees, and this is by Chinelo Okoporanta. This is a Nigerian author, and this book takes place in Nigeria, and it sounds delightful. The synopsis. I got y'all. Inspired by Nigeria's folk tales and its war, under the Dollar Trees is a deeply searching, powerful debut about the dangers of living and loving openly. Ijoma comes of age as her nation does. Born before independence, she is 11 when civil war breaks out in the young Republic of Nigeria. Sent away to safety, she meets another displaced child and they, star-crossed, fall in love. They are from different ethnic communities. They are also both girls. When their love is discovered, Ijoma learns that she will have to hide this part of herself but there is a cost to living inside a lie. As Edwidge Danticat has made personal the legacy of Haiti's political coming of age, Okoparantas on the Diodala trees uses one woman's lifetime to examine the ways in which Nigerians continue to struggle towards selfhood. Even as their nation contends with and recovers from the effects of war and division, Nigerian lives are also wrecked and lost from taboo and prejudice. This story offers a glimmer of hope, a future where a woman might just be able to shape her life around truth and love. You are freaking welcome. Okay, now the last and final prompt, and tell me that you don't think of this when you hear In This Together. We're on this together. No? No? Just me? Just, okay. I'm gonna let you get away with that lie. So we are all reading Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I have not ordered my copy yet. I looked at my library first, but then I realized that I want to be able to tab and underline to my heart's content. So I will be ordering my copy 
lickety split from Amazon as of February 1st. I don't think I want to read that first, so it's not like a priority to order it right away. But yes, it's basically a poetry collection, I believe. Or yes, poetry, freeform poetry that tells a story. The Poet X, that's the title. And I'm going to give a synopsis since I've given a synopsis for every other book. A young girl in Harlem discovers slam poetry as a way to understand her mother's religion and her own relationship to the world. Debut novel of renowned slam poet Elizabeth Acevedo. Xiomara Batista feels unheard, unable to hide in her Harlem neighborhood. Ever since her body grew into curves, she has learned to let her fists and her fierceness do the talking. But Xiomara has plenty she wants to say, and she pours out all of her frustration and passion onto the pages of her leather notebook. Reciting the words to herself like prayers, especially after she catches feelings for a boy in her bio class named Amon, who her family can never know about. With mommy's determination to force her daughter to obey the laws of the church, Ziomara understands that her thoughts are best kept to herself. So when she is invited to join her school slam poetry club, she doesn't know how she could ever attend without her mommy finding out, much less speak her words out loud. But still, she can't stop thinking about performing her poems, because in the face of a world that may not want to hear her, Ziomara refuses to be silent. All these books just get me so hyped. I have chills after reading that synopsis. I cannot wait. And that's it. That is it. That is it. That is it. That is my Blackathon TBR, as well as some extra special recommendations for you all, hopefully helping you choose your Blackathon TBR. Definitely, definitely join me doing Blackathon this February. It's going to be so hype. So much of our community is coming together to do this readathon, and I am so excited about it. I think it was a wonderful idea, and I'm just so grateful that we have such creative and diverse minds in this community, and that we are continually coming up with ways to be inclusive, to basically you know, place a spotlight on ourselves and doing things in our own way and supporting one another. I just, I love it all. So yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm out of breath. I'm still really hype and I cannot wait for February 1st. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Bye. Peace. All the cool YouTubers always like do this and like my ring lights right here. I can't really. No, it's not smooth enough. Never cool.